Welcome to Journeys into Enlightenment with Janet. Join Janet and her friends as they gather at the intersection of consciousness and self-experience. What being consciousness in human form is all about. Access heart-centered awareness with them and feel the difference in the moment that will last a lifetime. Hello and welcome to Journeys into Enlightenment with Janet. I'm Janet Barrett. Thank you for joining me here in being present now in heart-centered awareness. Feel, along with me and my guest each episode, a loosening of what we call self-mind and revel in the calm, quiet, sacred sense of consciousness. I don't use words like God or Source too much as they are connected to huge morphic fields of belief. That means there's a lot of energy of all kinds that we can be in reaction to and relation to when we use those words. It is why I might use the word cabbage at times. Not a lot of beliefs to interact with, and it's sort of fun to me to consider spirituality as a head of cabbage. And I mean no disrespect to your beliefs. What I am sharing with you is heart-centered awareness that is an offering of warmth, support, and non-judgment. A shared neutral state and sense to explore wonder. We are energetic beings in human form of all kinds, demonstrating and sharing in a remarkable diversity in thought, feeling, and experiences. Our forms can serve as distractions at times, as they experience potential and energies as we develop into our beingness. We find ourselves attached, attached and then defined by what we feel and think when they are only just sensory information we experience. We share in the oneness of morphic resonance of genetic memories, minds to mind, creating reality right in this moment. It is an active, dynamic, transformational state and sense of being in form. So, what comes to our attention, the patterns of habituated thoughts and feelings, can be different when you are paying attention. On this podcast, we bring all of this into focus. Come feel with me now, over the next hour or so, and experience your life unfolding, opening into your inner voice and world essence, being free of attachments to the this and that that define your daily life. Come into alignment with the wonder and creativity that being in life truly can offer. have been witnessing the qualities that chivalry encompasses under stress socially. Anyone who watched or listened to the House hearings in Washington, D.C. this winter, and for the last couple of years, has witnessed displays of chivalry not only from our military and diplomatic corps, but from impeccable government offices that are not feeling so good these days. We also have witnessed the lack of it. Chivalry encompasses courage, honor, courtesy, justice, and a readiness to help the weak as important social foundations. My guest this episode is Bill Protzman of Music Care Inc. We are going to consider this current age of chivalry. Bill, who has been a guest before on episode 19, offers transformational healing music awareness to military veterans and others. He is the perfect guest to share in unfolding our awareness of the stresses and graces upon those who embrace chivalry as their cornerstones in being alive. Now, let's take a moment to get present, if you haven't already. It's as simple as bringing your awareness to your breath. Be grateful for your breath. Then notice your heartbeat. Be grateful for the beat. Both our breath and heartbeat indicate that we are alive. Now, allow yourself to feel your breath move through your heart. Feeling your heartbeat and breath happening in sync with each other. Be grateful. You are alive. As you relax into this awareness, you can feel the connection of being formless into becoming present and centered in form. 
we have moved from our heads, our mind states, the holder of self and mind, and now into heart, which is our connection to essence, consciousness, God, spirit, source, universe, creator, cabbage. Feel your letting go. Just notice what lets go. Chivalry is a collective word. The qualities it includes are courage, honor, courtesy, justice, a readiness to help the weak. And in our conversation, it will include love, kindness, compassion. Let me just say right here that Bill has got great energy to bump into. He is one of the nicest men I've ever met. He comes out of a generations-old military family, and he is, to me, one of the nicest representatives of balanced male integrity, principles, and intelligence. He is his word and shares with us the best of being alive. Vibrant and dynamic, he has a built-in wonderful ear for the nuances and the sounds around us. He loves deeply, respects life, and embodies compassion for his fellow man. We are all fortunate. In addition to being a skillful and successful IT entrepreneur, Bill Protzman holds magna cum laude degrees in piano performance and creative writing and has concertized and performed for many years with a focus on bringing music to audiences in non-traditional ways. In 2011, he launched Music Care Inc., a for-profit corporation dedicated to teaching practical ways music can be used as a psychological impact on humans. His work was recognized by the National Council for Behavioral Health with an Award of Excellence in 2014, the behavioral health equivalent of winning an Oscar. For his foundational work establishing music as self-care, he has received an Inspiring Hope Award of Excellence also. His volunteer work has included board positions with Guitars for Vets and the San Diego Veterans Coalition. He has been instrumental in connecting thousands of military service members and veterans with honor tickets to the largest healing musical organization in his town, the San Diego Symphony. You will find his first book at Amazon.com, More Than Human, The Value of Cultivating the Human Spirit in Your Organization. He has written articles that have been published and appeared on Fox News, Your Tango, The Good Men Project, Psychology Today, and PracticalHeartSkills.com. You can find Bill's links in detail on my podcast webpage for episode 32 at www.JanetAndBeyond.com. Hello, Bill. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing great, Janet. It's so amazing to be talking with you again. It is, isn't it? <laughs> it, it is. I'm Thank you, technology. So- <laughs> yeah, I've been so looking forward to this. Um, you know, I was watching all those, well, not all, but a lot of that impeachment hearings energy earlier in the winter time since we're in spring. And you just kept coming to mind because I was just watching such wonderful displays of chivalry. And I thought, whoa, what's this age of chivalry all about and i thought you were the perfect person to talk with me about it so let's everybody just notice the wonderful presence of just being present and we're going to explore this current age of chivalry because it's not something that ever goes out of uh being because it's within each of us wouldn't you say bill that's the qualities it's always yeah, within it. I think it's our our best uh, our best human self, you know, comes through when when we're being chivalrous or when we're being compassionate or anything. But yes, mm-hmm. it's it's an encouragement to be the best we can be. Yeah, and it ne- never goes out of 
being because I think it's integral to the human experience. It's just it comes out and goes in awareness. You know, we ascribe to the age of chivalry, you know, and and Lancelot and Arthur and all that time. But whenever you have people that are willing to extend themselves, and that's all of us at any time throughout history, chivalry is present. And I think we need to maybe bring that more into focus these days. Oh, my gosh. That's like the understatement of the century, I think. <laughs> we definitely need to bring it more more into play. The whole, the whole idea about etiquette, you know, and, and the, <laughs> what people like to think of as old school politeness, there are reasons for that stuff. And we ignore them to our own detriment, I think. It, it's it's useful to be nice, and the the research in business is that companies that practice respect and honor and dignity and things like that uh, do better than companies that don't. And mm. I'll, I kind of have to say, well, duh. <laughs> but you know, we we in our age of science for everything, we have to prove it before we recognize the importance of it. And that's great. It, that's fine. That's something we've kind of. Uh, Shifted to, and it's more about instead of being something, I have to think that it has value and then I can do it. So we've kind of taken these steps to take something that probably is just in the state of oneness and we're all sharing in this space and we're, we're taking something that's natural to the dynamic of interacting with each other and taking it out examining it and then deciding if it has value or not right is that kind of it yes I, I think you're right we we're in this place whatever our needs are right <laughs> now where, yeah yeah whatever it is that we have to um we have to go through this process somehow of taking it apart and examining all the pieces and then saying oh this all looks good and it seems like it works and then putting it back together and then consciously choosing it instead of simply following the rules and and i don't want to say that in a rote way mm -hmm. but the rules right. are there i mean these practices exist because they work uh, and they're ancient you, you can look back into all the wisdom literature and find out that you know being respectful being the kind is really the the choice that works if you think about it as a choice Right. I, I think the the important thing maybe for our age is that we do offer these choices and people can see for themselves that it makes sense to choose chivalry versus um, whatever its opposite might be. And, and goodness knows, all you have to do is look around and see the results of what we're getting from the opposite of chivalry and um, can contrast that with the results that you can get from being chivalrous and... It, it becomes pretty plain very quickly to me anyhow, probably to others, that there are really great aspects to human beings. And if we <laughs> use them, yeah. <laughs> we can do amazing things, you know. All right. Well, just let me remind everybody who's listening here and being present in active transformational reality, heart-centered awareness, and just what we're focusing on with our subject of chivalry are the aspects of courage, honor, courtesy, justice, and a readiness to help the weak. And these are important social foundations, and they probably are all aspects coming out of love. That oxytocin that the body people have, right? And you develop and you connect with your child and, and your loved ones, and that's why they're loved, is because there's a chemical component in there that's fostering it. And this is all kind of like the outreach. Courage to take a stand for someone else and honor to respect what you love and courtesy making it easy to navigate with one another and the willingness the readiness to help someone who's in, in a weaker state than you are you have more attributes in that moment like a child and an adult the adult is going to step in and help that child because it's not in the same place 
And so these are all qualities we're exploring with Bill. And Bill does a wonderful service. He's all about music care. And he's, he's offering transformational healing music awareness, works with a lot of military veterans and people in disabilities in different states of being, and how we handle with the sound and what music can bring to people and how it can move people together, apart, all kinds of different things. So what do you notice, Bill, right in this moment about being and tuned in and what, are there resonances here we're playing with? Oh, absolutely. I've been thinking a lot about compassion recently and what music enlivens compassion for me uh, for anyone, actually, if you're listening to this and you're thinking about it, well, what music is your compassion music? It's like having your mm-hmm. joy music. Mm-hmm. But but compassion is juicy because it involves a lot of other things. Compassion is, you know, I feel your pain. Mm-hmm. And to feel someone else's pain is, it, it takes us to a different place. We don't like to feel pain. But when someone is hurting, like if your child is hurting, you want to help them. You want to do something that that's chivalrous actually you want to offer your best self and and do something practical that lets but, like, your take child it know from that you them. care right take it right, from them right. so they don't have to feel it right yeah right right and and this is uh, we're pretty good at sarcasm and a bunch of other things these days which, which are you know witty and we tend to think that they're you know erudite practices and how smart we are but you can't be sarcastic with someone who's hurting. Mm. It, it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And the ability to have the discernment to know when humor is appropriate or even sarcasm and to know when compassion is appropriate, that's, that's a huge part of, of being human in an actualized way. It's, it's okay to show up with humor. I mean, humor is one of those things that that sort of breaks the ice in many ways. And oftentimes it's a gateway to things like compassion, but the intention that you have behind it in chivalry, it's an outward focused intention in compassion. It's an outward focused intention versus an inward focused one. And we may need to sharpen up our ability to look outside of ourselves, outside of our individual selves and really grasp what's happening with the other person more fully and without judgment, in order to be able to do something useful. I mean, if, if I've skinned my knee, and I, I, this happens to all of us as a little kid, you skin our knee, you go running to mom, and, and there's nothing much that a parent can do except offer love. Mm-hmm. It's a skin knee. It's going to heal, right? You clean it up. It's not a problem. Mm-hmm. But if you go running to your mother, and you've skinned your knee, and you get the cold shoulder, or worse, you get something deprecating why did you do that billy look at you you skin your knee again how can you be so careless what kind of good is that ever going to (laughs) do yeah right you can really feel that (laughs) right in this moment yeah it gets you right in the gut you've got your skin knee and now you're hurting even even more and and all you needed was a kind word you know this is uh this is the beginning of chivalry it Mm. starts like right there you begin to learn it especially for guys. Okay, so I'm not being sexist here, but mm-hmm. the archetype of the male has always been the archetype that leads toward chivalry, and the archetype of the female is always the one that invites that leadership. Uh, you can read all the mythology on this. Mm-hmm. And it's a wonderful two-way street because there are other ways in which the woman leads, the archetype of the woman leads the male, and it, it, the roles reverse. It's a wonderful paradox. But the the man's job is to offer a woman favor. Mm-hmm. And if you think about offering favor, regardless of the gender that's involved, that just takes the whole thing out of the realm of, oh, look at you, Billy, you skinned your knee, bad, bad kid. It takes it to the realm of how can I show this compassion in our, in our modern day language? How can I honor the fact that my child is hurt right now? What words, what actions does it take to honor this this hurt, little hurt child? That's a whole different thing. And goodness, around us we have all of these people at all levels of responsibility in our world who are acting like hurt children. 
you know, we, we, this is a great <laughs> opportunity right now for a bit yeah. of chivalry. You mentioned the impeachment hearings, and, and I think yeah. we saw a lot of chivalry in play there. Certainly mm-hmm. uh, compassion and quite a bit of honor, and it, it's mm-hmm. very difficult to stand up and tell your truth yeah. when the world is watching. But, but that's the requirement of, of those who want to go deep into chivalry, is to be able to do that, knowing that you've done the right thing, and with no other expectation than having the truth out, essentially, showing being honorable in that space. And that's the same whether you're a mother offering a, a, a compassion to your child, or you're a voter offering compassion mm-hmm. to your candidate. Mm-hmm. It's tough out there, people. It's really tough. And social media makes it so much easier, you know, to, to, <laughs> to, yeah. <laughs> to dump on one another. <laughs> so, well, you you you've brought up a couple of great uh, uh, awareness. Well, all of it was great, but the, the, what catches my my ear in the idea of the favor, because that was in my 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 experience of that was when you have the joust. The knight goes to the lady, she gives him a favor, a ribbon or a flower or something that a token that represents her, her ideal of of her beingness and that. And then he goes to do the joust or he goes to battle and stuff. So the way you've mentioned it is interesting to me that we do, what do we offer another and it's easier where it's in the sense of a child and you say, oh, let me surround you with my love, right? And that's the favor. It's really uh, at the essence of a favor. And then you have where, uh, well, let's just see if we can degrade you. <laughs> and that's that experience you were talking about where we're beating up on Billy or we're beating up on someone who's willing to stand in front of the world, basically, and say this is what the truth was for me in that moment and have some one judge that and not be attached in that as best that we can that's a real interesting premise i like how you you introduce that hmm. it's a real paradox hmm. it's hard to grasp it all together because another chivalrous practice is to avoid scandal <laughs> oh is it really <laughs> sure the the, really? the night oh. was supposed to be above reproach and and okay. that's um well, let's see. What is it? There's uh, Be Impeccable With Your Word. The Four Agreements is a modern book about these things. Oh, right. Uh, okay. Right. You know, that's, that's one of those, um, not avoiding scandal, but being impeccable. Right. That's one of those requirements of uh, a chivalrous person, mm-hmm. man or woman, that is difficult to practice. It, it's very difficult to practice, especially in our days when the the lens of the microscope actually is is so attuned on people in public life and right. even in private life. Uh-huh. Um, it, it's very difficult to do that. So uh, the lady who, uh, the, the knight seeks a favor from the lady before this great battle or epic thing that he has to go off or quest or whatever it is, he's, mm-hmm. he's always looking for the archetype, the woman's archetype to favor him in his pursuit. And she won't give it unless he's scandal free. Ah. Uh. You know, oh. you don't want to favor a knight who's got a reputation for, you know, not not being the best possible human person he can be all the time. Or otherwise, you might cast scandal on your own name. Okay, so there she's granting the favor, which is really of appreciation, right, for uh, yes, his position. Yes, of uh, I see. It. Okay, I wasn't. All right, that's a little. It's like bit I, I, I see yeah, you. Right. I, I see your honor. I see your you're impeccable with your word. I see your strength and courage. Yeah. I favor that. Okay. Yes. So it's the qualities, you know, uh-huh. mm-hmm. that are different. And the wonderful paradox is because this is all set up in the and back in the day with knights and ladies. The paradox is that it's very difficult for a man and a woman to be completely scandal free. Mm-hmm. Look at that wonderful movie, uh, Camelot, the story of Lancelot and Guinevere. And, <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's yeah. married to the king, for heaven's sakes, and he's the number one guy, but this love triangle is going to happen one way or the other. And, and that, of course, is the great paradox of, of humanity that we all have to face. So where, how, do we, how are we impeccable with our love? You know, what, how do we place our love in a way that works somehow and doesn't destroy us from within? And, and 
that's life. <laughs> you know? Wow. You know, you, well, what, what we're opening up in my awareness is, um, and perhaps probably for, for our listeners, is that in the age of not a lot of parental influence, when you don't have a caregiver who loves, you know, who's in that state to offer that to And we can have other people step in. But the challenge is that's where that family dynamic is so important. The color offered. So if the parent is not home, who has the most at stake with the child, right? That's the deepest relationship with their loved ones, their immediate loved ones. Um, that that gets, we lose maybe some of that etiquette we were talking about. What and, and a lot of what chival- chivalrous behavior is, it is how to interact with others coming out of that place of love. So when we have someone else who's, who's helping children develop their social skills, there's maybe a different degree that's involved there that we're now seeing in these last 50 years showing up of all these children that, you know, we've got two parents working. And just something that maybe has gotten lost that we need to really refocus on. And it's not that it's an old thing, you know, like etiquette school and the gloves. It's about how to interact with one another in ways that empower us, that give grant favors and help us to to realize what is to be rewarded. Maybe we, you know, and that was seemed to be a part of chivalry was this dance with reward. You know, if I behave well, I'll get a reward. And you want to put that classification of behaving well. It's not about the reward. It's about the personal experience that you gain in it. There you go. Um, And maybe this is why we have science now uh-huh. which is stepping in to remind us with absolute proof of what it means to do the right thing, to be mm-hmm. grateful, you know, whatever it is. So great. Good for science. You're telling us what our parents, you know, didn't show us or couldn't show us or whatever. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because really, yeah. they weren't around. Yeah. And then now we have this thing about the reward. So um, the reward of chivalry is, is intrinsic. There are extrinsic rewards. I mean, if you're the knight and you find the Holy Grail or whatever your quest happened to be, that's great. You bring it back and then you're off to the next thing. Slay the dragon, whatever. Mm-hmm. But the rewards are really what come, um, they're the what come to your own heart. Yeah, yeah they're, they're intangible. They're not about money. You know, They're not about the gold or whatever it is. Um, uh. And anyone who's read the Grail Quest or see if you've seen any of the recent movies that have the Grail Quest is sort of the archetype of what's going on. Um, it's not really about the Grail at the end. You tr- the actual thing that turns out to be the Holy Grail is usually not that impressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But, but what, what is impressive, I think, is what you take away from it. Yes, it's the journey, the right? It's the journey, right? Yes, it, and the Holy Grail is the ourself. Yeah, it's ourself who it's we find. And it looks simple, and you wouldn't realize it out of anything. And that's exactly what it is. We are all one, right? We're, and yeah. Then, yeah. You know. And it's all about relationship, you know? It's about yeah. the, the combination of the male and the female archetype uh, in whatever gender form that might appear. That's the quest. And, and finding that love, that's mm-hmm. really what matters, you know? Mm-hmm. However you find it, however it, your practice takes it to you. Um, or or brings it to you if if you're <laughs> whether you're questing or you're I don't know waiting back in the castle for the gallant knight to show up. Either way, it comes to you if you're seeking it. Mm-hmm. But you can't you cannot not seek it and still be human, right? You can't just shut it off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and and if that quest looks like a scientist working, you know, a research scientist or a politician, whatever the occupation that you're in, that that journey, the quest is is implied, and the more the sooner that you accept it and begin to uh, pursue it actively and understand that this is really what you're here for, uh, the better. Wow, we've really gotten far away from music, but by the way. <laughs> 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 well, it's coming 
coming up here. It's coming up here. Uh, but I just find these are such fan, uh, um, uh, fascinating um, as part of the field. You know, we, uh, as always, everyone who's listening, you know, we always have a starting place and a topic. But it's only a starting place because anything has a field reference around it. And that's just what consciousness is. And so we think we're focused here, but then we realize that we're opening to a whole bunch more. That the little spot that we say is this is really a a condensation of all this and this is what it comes into so in taking apart as part of an active transformational state all these things that bill and i are exploring here with you we're just really creating opening in the field awareness and i think part of it bill is chivalry covers encompasses so much it's not just a thing you know it's a it's just really a label of a lot of stuff and then that's the energy dynamic that's present here so in this field everybody just be noticing we're because we're talking about at core is love that we have this experience of love we get it with family of you know mother father hopefully parent child and then it expands into community and in a state of oneness so we know what love is in some condition and that's the challenge of it depends upon how that relationship is working and then we recognize each other and we recognize how we love each other outside of a family organization and it gets into a big family it's the family of man and this is something that's in all humans all spiritual creatures wearing a human disguise here and how we relate everything is relation based so as we bring more focus to it we get to look at all this wonderful wonderful experience of being human and expressing and what we've got to that level i think we're talking about bill is where we do things because we be and yes. so it doesn't matter what the job is and the difference is in the scientist how many scientists have gotten into their field of energy or information because of their personal experience something fascinated them or there was an illness etc cetera, etc cetera. and that helps create a, f a focal point for them and it becomes that and they're there to serve mankind or however you you want to put that out then you have someone who says well i can make money off of this and i'm gonna let him do that and i'm gonna control this over here and you might f wind up with an individual who's more self-oriented in the sense of how he can use something and so yeah. then we get into that realm and this is kind of what we've seen a lot of is these different approaches to being and different levels of interaction in and when you're coming from that state of oneness you're going to see a whole different approach you're going to see these different distinctions that have been made by people and um what are you noticing in this moment Oh, I was just thinking of modern um, chivalrous people as you were speaking. And, of course, the Dalai Lama comes to mind. Mm. The last individual that anyone would think of as like Lancelot on a quest for the Holy Grail. But in a very symbolic way, um, the Grail quest is all of our quests. It, it, yeah. It's the life quest. Mm -hmm. And there's there's our Dalai Lama um, mm -hmm. on a life quest to open mm -hmm. the possibility for love and compassion in the world, and isn't that yeah one of the noblest quests that you can imagine? Right, and nobleness. Not doing it, you know, with a sword or anything like yeah. that, and right. and and in fact, he's doing it under uh, circumstances that are completely yeah. impossible. I mean, it's it's the ultimate. Um, real life example of the grail quest <laughs> and 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 yep um he'd be the sort of like the last person i'd think of as the knight in shining armor right 
Right, but there you are. Yeah, but there he is. You know, it's a beautiful, beautiful awareness. Definitely. Okay, so getting back to music. <laughs> oh, okay. So I've I've got yeah. a good one on this. Because, okay, you go you for know, it, and I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Okay. <laughs> my life is this way. So I was at a, a veterans meeting last Friday, and, and they were doing a ceremony to honor Vietnam era veterans. And uh, for those who know, but Vietnam. Veterans Day, I think, is coming up on the 29th of March. It's a special day of remembrance. So they did the ceremony. And um, there was an amazing guy there who sang the, the national anthem at the beginning, and then at the end he invited us all to sing with him, God Bless America. So um, it, leaving God aside for now, because God means lots of things to different people, including the Founding Fathers, I believe, who, who thought of God as bigger than just a Christian God, mm -hmm. um, but certainly as a universal spiritual power, so we're all singing God Bless America. And we get done and sit down, and the woman next to me, whom I know, uh, having worked with as a volunteer now for 10 years, said, um, wow, we've really got to do something about that song. It's just not gender neutral. <laughs> and I began to think about it, because, of course, we have this podcast coming up, the Chivalry Podcast. So... Um, God bless America, land that I love, that's pretty cool. Stand beside her and guide her. And I'm thinking, okay, so I can see where this is going now. Now, my friend who was sitting there is uh, a Navy veteran. And in the Navy, we always refer to ships as she. Mm -hmm. You know, my, she's Yar. You, you, even if it's the USS Ronald Reagan or whatever, the, <laughs> you know, it's, the, the name of the ship is male gendered. You still refer to the Ronald so, Reagan as she's sure. a great ship, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it started yeah. to put my mind into a twist. Janet, how do we get out of this one? <laughs> We're referring to our country as her, mm -hmm. but the implication there is the the female archetype, right? And and that the male archetype is there to protect the female archetype. Mm -hmm. Here we are, all of us, regardless of our gender, mm -hmm. serving together to protect this country that we love, which I think would apply to any country in the world aren't countries normally gendered mm. in the female mm. i know you about, have brought something uh, up i haven't paid attention to but i can see <laughs> it's an interesting no, I have german roots. We, used, we used to call germany the fatherland yeah um, but motherland this though raise, motherland I and mean, this raises a whole different mm. uh, conversation around chivalry doesn't it hmm and there it is in our music, uh -huh. you know, right there in our music. We're singing, and many people have said how much nicer it would be to have God Bless America as our national anthem than the Star Spangled Banner. Mm -hmm. But here, here it is all, uh, you know, charged full of gender that's not literal. So, so how do we wander into this when things are so deeply ingrained in us musically? All those unrequited love songs that we all love so much, and <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. Well, we refer to it as Mother Earth, right? And yes. I think we're we're. It may just be tweaking our ear, the genderness, because we're in a state of exploring gender, right? And. and and how we use it well, how we use it clumsily, how we use it against each other or for, you know, I mean, there's all these different aspects. And we're all in relation at the same time. And so the awareness of coming out of male organized uh, influences and female organized influences and how we keep that separate and where we need to let go of the separateness and just allow it to be information, I think is where we're at. And and what is certainly ha happening socially, this is all up. And so it's uh, a great awareness, and it doesn't, ha for me, um, I can appreciate the, all those aspects and not necessarily judge them and appreciate, hmm, isn't that interesting? I hadn't thought about that before or looked at it in such a way. And is it important? Is it valuable to ch be challenged by it? Or is it okay to be curious about it? And that's what you and I are exploring is the curiosity of look at the setup. Look how it looks like this. Is it in reference to that? Or is it just something that's this hard 
structure, you know, that that we take for granted. And um, I think it's a fascinating conversation about how we use our language and where our unconscious biases are and how sometimes they're okay. <laughs> you know, it's not in being the the nature of being politically correct. Sometimes I think it extrapolates things out of context so totally that you go, well, oh, that's just uh, it, there's nothing there, right? It's just about the performance of something. So interesting. So what did well, you decide? I, well, I haven't really. I, <laughs> the the trouble that I normally get to is that there's a literal um, level at which you can understand things, like stand beside her and guide her. Mm-hmm. And then there's a maybe three levels of distinction. Um, yes, as a man, stand beside her and guide her reminds me of my responsibility as a husband. Okay. Although, at the same time, my wife stands beside me and guides me. Mm-hmm. So now we're at the second level of meaning, which is that it's not really about the gender so right. much as it is about the State. the love, the, yeah. you know, the, the partnership right. that's there. Mm-hmm. And then there's the third level of meaning where you can go um, to the archetype, like we say Mother Earth um, or Gaia or the Fatherland mm-hmm. or, or whatever, mm-hmm. the, you know, mm-hmm. USS, whatever, she's a, she's a fine ship. The, the third level of meaning, and that's the one, I think, where um, even terms like God disappear. Mm-hmm. It's no longer a Christian God or a Jewish God or a Muslim God or any one of the gods in, that exist in all of the belief mm-hmm. systems in the world. It's, it's not an agnostic God. <laughs> it's not conscious. Whatever the word is for you, yeah, right. that's not big enough anymore. Mm-hmm. And when we say stand beside her and guide her, that archetype or the, the, the deeper level of her is much more inclusive than just people who are cisgender female or just countries that are referred to as female. Or if you have a language where you use uh, masculine and feminine articles, much bigger than that too. It, it's simply a reflection of something bigger. <laughs> A convenience, let's say, of, of allowing us to refer to it um, with with a direction, I get maybe with an intention. The well, intention think- of Mother Earth is to care for us who live mm-hmm. there. You mm-hmm. know, if, if Father Earth, it'd be a different thing. Hmm. Yeah. There'd be I think there's I think there's probably reasons why we. Um, why we favor certain aspects over another, right? And, and oh, in sure. our lab- and in our labeling of them, yeah. And because I, I can just feel right in this moment when the difference between motherland and fatherland, and uh, Gaia and Earth and growth and nourishment, etc. And the father energy is more of the the violence and the and 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 the violence of action you know what it takes to make something happen you know the dynamics and fusion and stuff so not in violence in the sense of oh d- male masculine will you know beat up somebody it's about the energy that it's harnessed that way and we just hold these associations in different contexts and so um they are both present, right? She's the egg, yes. she's there, and he's the dynamic that's got to interact to make things happen. But it's always at her direction, you know, and that's just like the sperm and the egg story. So we've got where the stories, where the energies are identified in different ways and in different levels. And that's what makes fast, it so fascinating to be present on this planet and be in a human form. Because you, you, you get to see all the different 
dynamics going on at the same time. And in this layer of viewing it, it's this. And in this one, it's this. And and they're all concurrent and consecutive and interacting all at the same time. So that diversity and the, the sheer the sheer volume of information floating around all these ways is just so outrageous. You know, you can't keep track of all that stuff. So we make it simple. We call it this. We call it that. And then we forget all what we gave up in order to come to that to- that topic, that title, that word and label that's something. So... All right. Yes, so. several, several thousand years of evolutionary <laughs> well, um, <condensed>. practice. <laughs> right. You know. Right. Yeah. So it's it's all loop. Here we go. And what got left out of the mix and what got put in and what is contained in all that, you know, we lose sight of. So, all right. So everyone, and just noticing right in this moment the whole idea of where we've t- taken um, – the stress, we're describing the stresses that are present in being present and the graces that are being present. And so my, my uh, approach to this, Bill, with you uh, is in noticing it as bandwidth. We have all this flavoring, all these different in chivalry. We have the courage, the honor, the courtesy, the justice, the willingness to help. And if we saw if we saw chivalry as a bandwidth of information, and we saw all each one of those resonating somewhere in there because everything is vibrational and resonating in sound waves, etc. Is there when you're working with people, an awareness that you're hitting certain tones because of bandwidth, it's got a tone, and that is that what we can ascribe these qualities to? Is there certain rhythms that are going to come out differently when we bring this awareness to it? Wow, this is a wonderful question. And I, I think, yes, the answer, of course, yeah. There's there's levels of 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 musical engagement. There's dance music that makes you move and perform and think and feel a certain way and then there's um classical music that has an opposite es- effect in many ways. And then there's metal and just like there's so many different ways that you can choose to open yourself up to an awareness. And all of us, of course, open to that awareness differently. But in this giant bandwidth, which I love the term, in, in the bandwidth of all that's available to us, there are so many choices there. And there are times where you need to dig down and, and get that Mars energy. You know, the, the, the destructive energy has to come in and break apart the, the, whatever is blocking you. Mm-hmm. And in those moments, there's music that does that, that can help break down the, the barriers to get you to the new place. And that music might look pretty destructive or sound pretty destructive to one person, and it might, to the same person, um, uh, listening to another person's destructive music might have a different effect. Mm-hmm. But if you know how to choose the music that supports you in that in that place where you're finding yourself in the bandwidth, in the flow, uh, that just enlivens the process. Because, you know, why sit around? If something needs to be broken open, why sit around and wait, you know? <laughs> you're, you're, if your quest is, is to, um, to slay the dragon, you're not going to get there by sitting home in the castle wondering which horse to use. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got to pick a horse and grab a lance or whatever it's going to take and get out there and, and get on the road to find that dragon because, you know, that's that's your job. And <laughs> there's plenty of uh, there's plenty of stories in the in the knighthood literature about this for the, the knights who stay home, don't do anything. And the ones who go out there and, the, you know, trying to pick the right combination of stuff that makes you successful is entirely individual. And I love your idea of bandwidth, because in that bandwidth, there's so many weapons that you can choose. 
<laughs> weapons. Oh, do. okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we need them. And some of them turn inward. That's the other hard part. Mm. Is that if you're if you're too hard headed about things, then part of the bre- breaking openness needs to take place with you. And I know this from experience. I've gone at things the hard headed way that I do so many times, and often I don't get the solution until I bang my head against the wall. You know, then it wasn't necessary, but something had to open me up. And that's part of the chivalric journey as well. You know, the quest can't really happen until you the quester have changed so in this in this wonderful bandwidth of things that are available if you're not getting the results you want change it up and one of the easiest ways to change it up is to invite yourself to some new music that you are either resistant to or maybe been resistant to in the past Mm -hmm. or don't like well there may be information in there that's necessary for the journey right now and if you're not getting what you're expecting well, it's time to time to find out why, you know, and and that's not an external thing; that's an internal thing. Well, the so discordancy, going is, yeah, the, the that discordancy that is going to maybe be different to each person, right? What what is it that triggers that you know fur going up on the back of your neck kind of thing, or yeah. you know, and when I I know the reference of musical notes and I'm also looking at sound you know the different sounds around us and in that bandwidth would be that too and how things are so triggering you know to the ear I mean that's the remarkable ability of it is that it will you hear something you know and it triggers that emotional center you smell something it triggers the emotional center I mean everything is kind of keyed to give us a spark to of reaction right and right we we want to be because it stimulates it's stim all of this is stimulation and it's how we monitor our stimulation because that's tension every you know anything alive has ten has a tensile quality to it it's just it's stress when it's too much or it's or it's rest and it, we're always kind of monitoring in between and some of us live in stressful states and then we have to hopefully have a place and a way to get to the restful state so that we're not bleeding the stress into the restful and coloring that and then you've got rest that's getting lost into the stressful state or how we just kind of merge all these things and this feels very much of uh, frequencies and vibrational oriented oriented and we're not necessarily utilizing, but, you know, you're great at mentioning what kind of music stimulates what in us. And I'm just curious in the constant barrage of sound and noise and what we get habituated to eliminating or toning down what we're losing in that and how we have to go back to this active listening state of taking hearing something again hearing it differently and maybe yeah in the 20 years since i last heard that piece of music and i never cared for them and now i find oh i really have a resonance for that i can tolerate that i it you know it's not i'm not as reactive as i was this is a really beautiful insight that you have janet there the music that is around us, the sounds that are around us, um, often grow on us over time. And um, there may be reasons why people who are of a certain age gravitate more toward uh, walks in the forest or walks mm-hmm. on the beach. Uh, there there may be something pulling us on an audible level, like an oral level, mm-hmm. pulling us to those environments where we can be more present to sounds that we didn't hear because mm-hmm. we're too busy or not interested when we were younger. Uh, mm-hmm. That, I think, is a, a marvelous awareness. I know there's been a lot of work done with um, the keys for different chakras, mm-hmm. correlating a particular key, like key of C, with a certain chakra. And then there's a lot of interest in vibrational theory and uh, you know what vibrations do this for us and what vibrations do that.
All right, everyone. We had a momentary glitch in the field, which is always interesting because you never know what to expect on this show when you're in transformational reality. So we have Bill back on the line, and we're going to pick up at some point. So everybody just will just regroup and notice what it's like when you lose sound, right? You can hear how the hearing, you can hear, you can feel how our hearing is really very powerful in a sense of connection. So it gives us focus, and I think that's probably the important part. So what are you noticing right in this moment, Bill? I love how you said that. (laughs) Hearing, Hearing is so primary. It's probably one of the last things to go, you know, along the, the road. But it's also the, the primary response comes from hearing. The, our hearing is what triggers us emotionally, fight, flight, freeze, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And it, it takes a lot longer for us to think about our response to it. But, um, but the hearing, the ears have already done their work, and so has the lizard brain. And by the time you think about it, you're already primed for whatever it is, wh- whatever that might be. So using music to prime yourself properly is an, an awesome opportunity, especially when it comes to practices like chivalry or kindness or whatever they might be. So picking music that enlivens your next practice is sort of like priming the pump. Mm. You, you get yourself ready for it because you know it's coming, and then you're ready to go in, into battle or whatever it is. I, I'm thinking about fight songs at football games or walk-on music that you hear at uh, baseball games when folks come up to bat. It's such an amazing opportunity. And, uh, you know, why use silence? (laughs) The last thing you want to do. Well, there are times for silence, too. But even in church, we sing before we pray, you know? So there's there's a preparation with sound. Even for the most intimate conversations that we have with God. It's all vibratory. Right. I mean, I think one thing that I totally enjoy is just sounding. And when groups of people sound together and you just you're just expressing this uh, vibrant vibration that's that is present in the moment. And like anything, it's about being present into what what is being offered in that moment and not in your expectations or your intention so much other than to just be present and reflect dynamics and energies and potential all dancing around, right? And I love that um, we, 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 we can dumb ourselves down. The brain is making choices. And, you know, that parent listening for the child because it's the trigger that something's wrong. And then there can be all kinds of noise going on, but that person who's in charge of that child in the other room hears that sound and goes, oh, I got I got to I got to go check it out. Yep. When there were 99% of all the other chatter didn't register at all. And so we get cued to our responses and whether it's this inherent thing that we we are tracking there there's something about the emotional that gets triggered without you thinking when you listen to music, when you hear a sound, when you hear the bird, when you hear the march, when you hear the the theme music play, you know, on the commercial or something, and you're instantly in a reaction, and you didn't have any thought that you wouldn't be or that you would be. It just wasn't there. All of a sudden, oh, I feel that. And you just... I think that is just one of the delights of being physical, right? Mm -hmm. Is this wonderful ability to feel the vibration of whatever the tone is and the bandwidth of what life offers and um, how we use it. How we, how we care for ourselves, how we care for others and expressing and being. So, what do you notice? Our systems are so good at recognizing sound. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I'd recognize the voice of my grandmother, maybe even my great grandfather, who was Whoa. someone who's. I, I think I'd recognize that voice if I heard it again. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it's it's remarkable because I didn't spend any time learning that stuff. Mm-hmm. It's just what we do, and and obviously the sound of the voice of your significant other, your child, or even in a certain sense, our pets, we respond to, you mm-hmm. know, the, mm-hmm. the bark mm-hmm. of our dog. We know that our dogs bark versus somebody else's, uh, our cats meow versus anyone else. And these are, um, th- it's so remarkable that we have this ability to be so um, discerning about sound. Mm-hmm. And to welcome that just opens up this universe of possibility for us. So as I sit here and and uh, want to respond to your question there aren't really words <laughs> but there are so many feelings mm-hmm. as, as i remember sounds i can remember you know if if my great grandfather were to be here and speak to me i would remember him completely instantly mm-hmm. and and that's such an amazing thing you know that, that human beings can do this and it's not just the image that comes back, it's the energy that comes back. Because the vibration, the sound, the remembered sound brings with it all of the experience of being with my great grandfather. It brings that reality right up front right. and center. You're in it. Instantly. Just <laughs> There's boom. no time. There's no time. There's no space. It is present. Right. It's just yeah, it's presence. Yeah, yeah it's and the present. full presence of all the ancestors, or or the the forest that I I went to a redwood forest as a child. I can remember the sounds of that redwood forest, and I'm really? instantly okay. forest. It's it's like that. Mm-hmm. And um, when you were talking about toning together, um, that remember if you're listening to this and you remember the movie uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Oh, oh yeah, okay. There's a melody in there that they uh-huh. hear all over the place and in one place they hear hundreds of people singing it together it reminds me of the recordings of the gregorian chant that you hear sometimes or of monks singing the om that you can hear Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if you've experienced any of those sounds in real life that stays with you it becomes like part of who you are and when you hear those sounds again and remember them again that brings the experience of that moment back in a way that is so incredibly beautiful and powerful. It's power that you can use. Totally. Well, all right. Let's be noticing, everyone. We've had a wonderful, wonderful conversation around chivalry. Look at all these aspects that we've covered. Oh, yeah. So in bringing awareness... It's not just someone in a uniform, though they're in the front line. It's each of us embody or can embody fully, depends upon how much you want to embody each, courage, honor, courtesy, justice, and the readiness to help the weak. There is something so profound in all of those that each of us have the ability to access and develop. And we all know those around us who do this all the time. And then we also are aware of those that could do more. So we are each responsible for ourselves. And notice what it would be like to demonstrate more courage in a way that you may not notice, but others would. Because we're all our own worst enemies. I think Bill would agree with that. So, (laughs) and honor. What does that mean? Check the resonance of that. Yeah, I see people looking at themselves in the mirror. Interesting. And courtesy. What does it take to just open the door for someone? A very simple act. That can be profound. And justice. We, we, we get so... Look for justice. We're looking to validate it. And I think we do that because the world is full of injustice. Places where people just walk past each other. 
and being willing to offer a helping hand. What that's like. And weakness comes, weakness and strong are terms uh, of, of power, I suppose. And we just, anyone, anyone can be strong or weak and be both at the same time. And it's not weakness in the sense that I have to save you, though that might come into it. It's about being feeling less in the moment and that you can feel more in the moment. What you notice in Bill? Anything there you'd like to close with, I'm, maybe? I'm thinking of um, one of my favorite video games. <laughs> 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 and how a character, an avatar that is powerful in one way is also weak in another. Mm -hmm. How all mm -hmm. of us have our strengths and our weaknesses, and they all balance out. Mm-hmm. And no one person is the ideal, mm -hmm. which means that together we all have to do the work. We can't get there alone. Mm -hmm. And chivalry is like the grease that makes it possible for all of us to work together smoothly. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, thank you so very much, Bill. Thank you, Janet. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Delight, an absolute delight. Bill mentions the Four Agreements, a practical guide to personal freedom, a Toltec wisdom book by Don Miguel Ruiz, which is part of a wonderful series for contemplation. And for those of you interested about the origins of God Bless America by Irving Berlin, I suggest you check out www.performingsongwriter.com. They have a good article there. Bill and his friend demonstrated being present. They heard a song in terms of current gender awareness when they were listening. When it was written almost a hundred years ago, Irving Berlin was writing an anthem for the country to rally around, and a love letter to a country that accepted himself as an immigrant boy. His lyrics reflect his times. To explore chivalry in modern day relationships between men and women, Bill has a wonderful article he has written for Igor Tango. The link is listed on our podcast page. I look for quotes that cover the span of our subject. You cannot have a proud and chivalrous spirit if your conduct is mean and paltry. For whatever a man's actions are, such must be his spirit. Demosthenes. He who defends with love will be secure. Heaven will save him and protect him with love. Lao Tzu. And a gentleman is not defined by the content of his wallet or the cut of his suit. He is defined by his manners and the content of his character. And that's from Gentleman's Essentials. My blog, Today's Chivalry, is available on my blog page at my website, www.janetandbeyond.com. You can hear it on my YouTube channel, Journeys into Enlightenment with Janet Barrett. There are many elements to chivalry. Perhaps at core is love expresses kindness. This episode, we feature Kindness Anyone from the Meditation Archive at Interlude in an internet retreat. Kindness Anyone? What is the price of kindness? What is the cost of meanness? It seems to take a great effort for some people to be nice to others. Maybe they don't think the stranger is worthy of their consideration, or maybe they are in a hurry or feeling stressed. 
Maybe nobody taught them to be nice, so they don't see the problem with the cruel comment or the curt reply. But there is a problem. We all have our moments of short temper or lack of consideration, and we all want life to go smoothly, but when we're unkind, we create turbulence that we or somebody is going to have to deal with. Sharing our negative vibes, we are likely to get negative vibes right back. The simple request turned aside callously becomes a demand. The disagreement becomes a confrontation. The argument becomes a fight. In the end, the person who couldn't strain themselves to be courteous find themselves in an emotional upheaval that takes much more energy than a kind response would have taken. What happens when we're kind to one another? Most often the other person relaxes. They become more cooperative. They may extend a kindness back to us. Normally, they won't hit us or call us names. They see us as no threat, so their defenses come down. Maybe they become our friend. How much nicer it is to think that our community is populated with friends rather than enemies. How much nicer to think that when payback comes, it will be for kindness rather than for cruelty. Think about your interactions with people. Are they mostly pleasant? Or do they often seem full of conflict? What's the source of the conflicts you have? If you think it's because other people are jerks, think again. It's possible to have pleasant interactions even with people who appear supremely obnoxious. It may take a little more effort on your part, but there are very few people on this planet who won't respond to compassion and kindness. Here are some suggestions for generating more kindness and affection in your life. First, take your time. Try to avoid being in a hurry. When we're rushed, it's more difficult to be patient with others, and we're more likely to speak without thinking. Stay centered. If you are well-grounded, rested, and nourished, you'll be more resilient in challenging relationships. Regular meditation helps us to stay balanced and to act through a compassionate heart. Reserve judgment. Unless you know a person very well, you don't know their motivations. And no matter how well you know them, you don't know what experiences brought them to this place. Avoid imputing evil intent before you know the circumstances of someone's actions. Connect with a greeting. People like to be noticed. Use greetings to establish that you know they are there. Use their name if possible. Be aware of your tone of voice. Your tone says more than your words, so watch it. Acknowledge concerns. If the person you are talking to thinks you are trying to understand their point of view, they will try to help you to do that. If they think you don't care, they may feel they need to up the ante to get your concern. Be of service. Ask yourself, how can I serve? When we give of ourselves, we get back what we would like to receive. If not, we at least know that we've fulfilled one of the requirements of a meaningful life. Be curious. People respond well to people who seem interested in them. Use compliments. A few kind words costs you nothing, and they show you are aware of the good in the other person. Smile. A smile is the quickest and easiest way to express goodwill. It makes you feel good, too. Humor. Sharing the funny side of experience creates a bond between the co-laughers. Please look at our episode webpage for all the specific links. You can contact Bill directly at bill at musiccare.net or at his website, practicalheartskills.com. He's listed also at LinkedIn, YouTube, Your Tango, Facebook, and Twitter. If you are ready to learn how to use music as self-care, you can take the guided, gamified, and fully mentored online course at quest.musiccare.net. Thank you for joining me here at Journeys to Enlightenment with Janet. 
A new episode is released every two weeks. Any questions or thoughts or guests you'd like to suggest, you can email me directly at Janet and Beyond Podcast at Outlook.com. For more information about all the elements that make up each episode, they are on my podcast page at my website, www.JanetMBeyond.com. While there, you will also find information about my other podcast show, Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet, and all about my work with clients. You can sign up to receive my regular weekly blog, Life in the Beyond, Journeys into Enlightenment. If you are looking for other regular opportunities to sit in heart-centered awareness with myself and others, you can join us in my Fuzzy Photons playground groups I offer on Wednesdays, live interactive space via Zoom video conferencing. You can follow each episode of this podcast series on my YouTube channel, Journeys into Enlightenment with Janet Barrett. Till the next time, notice what feels different right in this moment. It is real, and it can last a lifetime.